Welcome to Style Masterclass, the podcast that teaches women to look stylish and feel confident so that they can show up ready to conquer and slay no matter what size they are. I'm your host, Miss J. You ready? Hello, hello, everyone. This is a special episode of the Style Masterclass podcast because we have a guest today. And my guest and I have become like internet friends. I don't know if you have internet friends, you have social media friends where you like their thing and then they like your thing and then we like each other's stuff and then we're commenting on each other's stuff. That's how I connected with today's guest. I'm going to let her introduce herself and her amazing brand to you because it's totally unique. And it's size inclusive. So I'm going to kick it over to her to introduce herself. And then we're going to get into the nitty gritty because I want you to hear about how she developed what she developed, how she came to be a businesswoman, and that this is not the first chapter of a career for her. So like many of you on this call, a lot of you have a profession, you have a career, and you're thinking about segueing something else. And maybe you're passionate about something or you have an inkling about an idea. And I really want you to be inspired by her story, as well as we're going to talk about fashion and style and all the thing things, including bras, you know, one of my favorite topics on today's episode. So I'll let my guests take it away. Karen, introduce yourself to the people. Hi, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And thanks for having me today. I'm so excited to tell your audience about what I do, because this is something that I passionately believe there is a need for. And, you know, until now it hadn't ever been met. And that's, that's kind of what my story is. So I was, you know, a corporate, you know, working in the corporate world. I was a mom, busy mom, had kids. This goes back probably 10 or 15 years. And, um, I've always been full busted. I've always been on the cusp of plus sized. And we had, a uh, a weekend with friends plan and friends were visiting us at our house and we had, you know, another couple and their kids and our kids. And, um, I was excited to, uh, you know, hang out with everyone on Saturday morning and make breakfast and stuff. And I realized when I got up Saturday morning that I couldn't just stay in my pajamas, which is kind of, you know, that's what I was used to doing with my own family when we were just kind of hanging out on Saturday mornings. And And I realized wow, you know, we're in mixed company. (laughs) There's another couple, there's the husband of my friend and there's, you know, kids of different ages. And I thought I can't just be completely unsupported. You know, there'd be too much obvious movement and it would be socially awkward. (laughs) I love this part of your story because I feel like every woman right now has related to, they were on a like vacation with friends or other family members and they go to get up and do their normal thing. And they realize like their breasts are swinging or lanterning (laughs) or peeking (laughs) out from underneath their pajama top because it's not quite long. Like, and then you like pick up something and you cover it and you try to hustle hustle to the bathroom and put on a bra really quick. Like, I feel like every woman (laughs) relate to, oh shit, what am I going to do now? So I I love this part of your story. Please continue because it's so relatable. Yeah, exactly. And so I, you know, I realized I, I have to put on bra and I just, it was just this deflating feeling, you know, like it just felt like it ruined the whole vibe, you know, because I wanted to just be all relaxed and cozy. And I felt like, you know, I was the kid who had to go to school when everyone else got the day off, you know, I just had to the strap on the harness. And, you know, at that point you might as well get fully dressed because, you know, you got to strip down to put the bra on. And so that was what started me thinking and looking for some sort of alternative. And so I went on a deep dive Google search. I went to every bra shop and department store and every boutique I could find. I tried every single bra alternative and quote unquote comfort bra, sports bra, you name it. And they all involved a compromise, right? So what I wanted was I wanted to be supported. I wanted to look attractive and I wanted to look dressed, but I also wanted to feel like I was still in my pajamas and my sweatpants. So anything I found that was comfortable, like fabric wise and didn't have a tight elastic band, just gave me no support or shape at all. And anything that gave me support or shape or lift had some sort of really constrictive, uncomfortable feature, like usually the super tight chest band or elastic band, sometimes the really tight shoulder straps. Sometimes it was like the squeezy shapewear fabric, which 
you know, if it squeezes hard enough, it'll lift and support, but that was sort of not the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you feel like you're in a catch up tube where everything's sort of being squished to like a booby bubble under your chin, not quite the vibe. Just not quite the vibe. <laughs> exactly. So I was really discouraged and every, every, meanwhile, I'm busy, I'm working, I'm raising my kids. And every six months or so I get frustrated again. I'd be like, there has to be something. Somebody must have invented something. And, and again, I, I'd go to the obscure corners of the internet. I'd find every crazy contraption people had invented, nothing. So it was really fortunate convergence of events that happened about, about seven years ago. I learned about a a sewing coach that had opened a studio in my city, and I had never really heard about a sewing coach, but I had grown up sewing. I had made my own clothes as a teenager. I made clothes for my kids. So I did have skills, but I thought what I'm, I would like to try and make this myself, but I think this might be a little bit beyond what I can do alone. So I reached out to this studio and I said, Hey, this is what I'm looking for. Is that something you can design? And she said, well, no, I don't, I don't do that, but I coach and I will coach you. So I was like, sign me up. I'm going to do this. I'm determined. So I started meeting with her and working with her once a week. And we just set about prototyping, draping, fabric sourcing. We tried all kinds of things. And I started with the number one thing was no chest band. There cannot be anything tight around my rib cage, under my boobs, because that was the bane of my existence. I really hated that. I want to and pause the- you really quick because I think this is, I mean, I, there's so many like little like nuggets. I, my, my brain's like, oh, but the first thing I want to talk about is like you sought out help right? You are obviously a smart cookie. You had some knowledge, you knew what you wanted, but then you also went and got help. You didn't just sort of presume to like, oh, I should know how to do this, or I should be able to figure it out on my own. Like what was your frame of mind that helped you seek out help? Because I think there's so many smart cookies listening who probably have some knowledge, have a desire for something, and then they don't go get the help they need to take them to that next step. So What do you think your frame of mind was there? I think part of it was, well, and, you know, for years there, I didn't even realize that there was help to be had. And I think that's probably why I never got started. But then when this, when I heard about the sewing studio, it started the wheels turning. And I thought, I think a lot of times we as women are so used to just having to take care of things ourselves. Like we'll just do it ourselves we're, you know, we hope and we wait for people to help or support us and they don't. So we're like, ah, fine, I'll just do it myself. But we all know how hard that is, right? And we all know how much we long for support and collaboration and, and a partner in, in our creative pursuits. And so when I found out about this, I thought uh, this could be, actually, that's not true. The first thing I thought is maybe this person could design it for me, right? And then... <laughs> Because I I hadn't ever really considered myself capable of it, right? Because I knew that, and we all know if you have a full bust, it's there's a lot of forces of physics at work, right? Yes. It's, it's a real engineering challenge. There's weight, there's torque, there's movement, there's potential and kinetic energy, right? So and honestly, the first person I talked to about this idea was a mechanical engineer. <laughs> But it happened to be a man and he was just kind of like deer in the headlights, like, uh, I can't talk about this. <laughs> um, so I just thought I didn't know how to approach it, I think was the thing. I knew I had sewing skills, but with this sort of engineering challenge, I thought I'm not even sure how to start. And so that's why I didn't think I could. And then it wasn't until the the sewing coach said, well, I, I can't, I won't design it for you, but I will help you design it. And that, that just totally empowered me. And I thought, well, that I could do that. I could do, you know, with some guidance, with a, with a guide, with a mentor, I think I could do this. Good job, Um, coach. Good job. (laughs) Cause that's what good coaches do. They're like, well, I won't do it for you, but I'll be alongside you. I'll help you do it, whatever the it is. So, okay. Oh my God. I love this. So we get with the sewing coach. 
You right. try a bunch of, you're like Benjamin Franklin in like a lab. You're like <laughs> trying things, right? Honestly, right. It, I felt like the crazy mad scientist because I thought, I don't even know if this is possible because if this were possible, why wouldn't someone have done it by now? So I was kind of, I kind of did feel like maybe this is crazy. Maybe this is a blind alley, but I was just so determined because it's, you know, I don't know if everyone is as sensitive as I am to all these like pokey, constricty, you know, wire and elastic things, but it was driving me nuts. But I told her from the outset, like what my, what my goals were and what I wanted. And that was basically the, you know, that it had to support, it had to, it was also directional too. I was like, okay, it has to lift the boobs up, has to keep them in and point them forward. (laughs) 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 All three of those things are really important in order to like look good, you know. Yeah, because how many of us have tried something wireless and then we end up with breasts coming out of our armpits. We end up with boob underneath whatever the supportive, I put that in air quotes, band was supposed to be. So, I mean, I love that you were like, okay, up, in, forward. Like that's, exactly. those are your marching orders, ladies. I'm curious <laughs> if you have a favorite fail amongst all of the prototypes. Like if you have one that was like, just like a favorite of all the fails, because entrepreneurs, we have constant failure, y'all. That's sort of what's happening behind the scenes for most of us. So I'd love to hear what was your favorite fail? Yeah, there were a lot. <laughs> So it's hard to pick a favorite, you know, like your kids. <laughs> I love them all. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, when you asked that, I had this like flashbulb memory come to mind. And it was a this, this bright orange number that, I, as I said, I, I experimented with a lot of different fabrics because I knew I wanted it to be soft and comfy and stretchable, but it had to be strong enough to actually do the support. So... I fell in love with this one fabric. Anyone out there who sews or loves clothes knows what it's like to just fall in love with a fabric, whether or not it's practical. Yes. And it was this, oh, yes. <laughs> it was this kind of sunset ombre, you know, it was like red, orange, yellow, and you know, it's just beautiful. But when I sewed it up into the pattern, it was, <laughs> it was way too stretchy. So everything just kind of like sagged and it was... <laughs> It was disappointing and did not at all have the desired effect, but I actually still have that prototype because I love the fabric so much. Oh, I love your favorite fail. So it was one of many of your, your little failure children. I I love that analogy. So keep walking us through the process. So we went through multiple prototypes. The beautiful fabric got cut into, oh, the shame. I I feel you when you have like a gorgeous fabric and then the thing doesn't work out, but the thing's been cut. So where did we go from there? more fabric, more, again, I just, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a fashion insider. So I didn't know like where you go for, where's the best place to go. I, you know, I live in a sort of provincial part of the Midwest. There aren't that many fabric stores. I I went to the fabric stores that exist. I think, you know, obviously there's like Joann's and then we have, you know, maybe two or three independent fabric stores. I went to my nearest city and I scoured all the independent fabric stores I could find there. And I just, you know, I just, try it a whole, I bought, you know, a yard or two yards or three yards of all these different fabrics and then would, would cut it up and sew it into the pattern. And the pattern evolved as we went, the, the lines, it kind of, the torso was sort of finalized first. And then as you can imagine, figuring out what had to happen up here to, to lift and support and shape, um, took a lot of experimentation. Uh, and we try, I tried, um, different types of fabrics from, you know, technical materials to, to natural ones. And in the end found this just gorgeous organic cotton. It's a, it's an organic cotton that is, I guess you would describe it as a heavyweight cotton Jersey, but it has exactly the right amount of stretch. And this is where you know, it took, it really was a scientific process because what, what we realized as we got the pattern closer and closer, we realized that the exact amount of stretch ratio to the weight of the fabric made a big difference. And then also the direction, if you have a four-way knit or a four-way stretch fabric, it usually stretches more in one direction than the other. So it was also really critical the way each pattern piece was turned to take advantage of that natural stretch differential. So, you know, if you wanted it to stretch more or less, like 
I wanted more ease around like my middle, right. Where there's, you know, I'm not trying to lift anything up. It just kind of needs to be gently held and then less stretch where you're fighting gravity. So you need kind of that stronger, stronger lift. Okay. You know, I, and I, she sent me one of her dresses, y'all. The drape on this is beautiful, even though it's technically a heavyweight knit, like the drape is really beautiful and it's still very soft. Um, and if any of you really like to wear knitwear, but you like knitwear to be like sneaky pajamas, <laughs> that's totally what this is. Sneaky. And if you're in part of Modern Charm School, your September capsule collection features these dresses. So definitely take a look there if you're a member of Modern Charm School. If you're not a member of Modern Charm School, you want to get in because you want to be able to take a look at how we created some collections of clothing around these beautiful garments. So we, you've, you've stumbled on the right fabric in the right direction, which is interesting for the manufacturing process. So if any of you ever sewn anything, you know, you have to lay out a pattern and you can fudge it if you're a home seamstress. You're like, eh. If it kind of, I'm going to just squeeze this shape in here. I'm going to squeeze this piece in here. When you're manufacturing and you're doing something this technological and you have to factor all these things in, it's not like, you know, you can fudge a pattern piece and stick it somewhere. So what was that part like getting it from like, okay, now we've got this prototype, we have our fabric. Now we got to factor it and start making it on scale. Right. Well, it took about 10 times longer than I thought it would. <laughs> As I all thought, entrepreneurial endeavors do. Yes. Right. I thought yeah, three to six months or so. And it was probably more like five years. <laughs> As I said, it was seven years ago that, that I started working on the design. And then, you know, it was probably between year one and two when, when I had the Eureka moment and I'm like, it works. We did it. We did it. You know? And then I thought along the way, I had talked to so many people who were really interested and I had done a lot of research and I, I started getting really determined to, to bring this to market, you know, so that other women who wanted and needed this would have the option. Well, as you pointed out, it is really, really technical and you need a highly skilled factory to be able to do that. And I, so this was a big education in the fashion industry for me too. Of course, most people know that since the nineties, eighties, nineties, 90% of our domestic clothing manufacturing disappeared because everything was offshore. So there weren't that many factories left. And then a lot of the factories can't do knits. They, a lot of factories only do wovens, meaning non-stretch fabrics. So I needed a factory that could do knits. And then on top of that, I needed one that was really skilled. And I needed them to be able to work in small batch because I'm, I'm a micro brand. You know, I don't have, I'm not some big corporation. So that was quite an adventure. And that was not kidding, at least five years, because there were a lot of fails in that journey too. And all kinds of twists of fate, like a freak tornado hit the factory that I had finally found that was going to be able to do, do my production. And then a freak tornado hit them. And they were, <laughs> they were basically like, we're not taking on any new work for years, you know? And then and then the pandemic hit because all of this was during the pandemic too. And any factory, any domestic factory that did garment manufacturing stopped everything to just manufacture PPE and face masks. So there were so many delays and there were so many times that I thought, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe I should just quit. <laughs> you know? Well, and I love that you talk about that because those thoughts come to, I mean, I know for sure entrepreneurs, but anyone in the profession, right? At some point during law school, I was like, maybe this is a terrible fucking idea, right? Or, you know, people going through medical school or grad school or college or any entrepreneurial endeavor, they're like, all of us come to that moment where we're like, okay, maybe yeah. this is a bad idea. Maybe I should give up. How did you talk yourself through that part of it? I think it, you know, some of it was like patience and compassion, right? So I, I remember one period of time specifically where I had been, again, really close to getting a factory on board to do this. Then they they were sort of a, they were a combination sort of shop. And right, right when we were ready to schedule, they're like, well, you know, actually, we're not going to do production anymore. <laughs> and they were out of state. So I had to ship all my, I bought all this fabric. I had shipped all my materials there. I was, I'd hung all my hopes on this partnership and they were just leaving like 
breaking up with me and you know, not doing production anymore. So I had them ship everything back. I just pulled everything back in. I sent, I brought everything back home. I had like rolls and rolls of fabric sitting in my house and I was just so discouraged and sad and I had no idea what to do. And, and I literally just sat with that for about three months and I didn't force myself to do anything. And I didn't make any decision in the heat of the moment. I just, just sat with it. And meanwhile, you know, I had another job to do to pay the bills. I had family to take care of. So I just put it on the back burner and, you know, some days just sort of like turned, they didn't even want to think about it. So it percolated back there. And then again, as things have a way of doing through another twist of fate, it turned out, I reached back out to someone who had assisted me in the early stages of getting the pattern digitized and graded for in preparation for production. And she said, you know, in the, whatever it was, two or three years that had gone by since we had first done that, she said, there's actually a small shop right here in town that I think could help you. And, and I almost couldn't believe it (laughs) because that was, it sounded too good to be true. But in the end, that's what happened. That was the, this wonderful little, I call it a micro factory helped me do my very first production runs and some of my early designs and got me to that next step. So It's, I think that, and then many other steps along the way, because there's a story like this for everything, like so many of these stories, right? No. And um, over and over again, I've thought about that saying where people say, you know, it's, it's, it's about determination, right? It's just about deciding like failure is not an option. (laughs) And the more I learned, the more I researched fashion, the more I learned about why full busted, full figured plus size women are not represented and are not served by the fashion industry. It got me really fired up. It got me really angry. It got me kind of outraged and I'm not someone who outrages easily. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I just thought, and especially the realization that what I wanted to create was not impossible. It was not at all impossible. It just, it was complicated. It was expensive. It was highly technical, but those are different than impossible. Right. And so I was also kind of angry at the industry for making us all feel that there were no other options than what they present to us. Right. As retail fashion. Y'all can't see me nodding emphatically at her. I'm like, I have my preach nod happening. So for my audio listeners, YouTube, you can see me, but our audio listeners can't see me like, yes, girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. So, yes, Karen. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, you know, once I realized this is possible and, and the more women that tried this on, the more women that tried it, I was just delighted to find out this didn't just work for me, you know, because that's always a risk too. Like, well, maybe I just have some weird quirk body type and that's why it works for me. But in fact, I was thrilled to find out it works on busty petite, it works on busty tall, it works on plus size, it works on small frame. It's really, it's really a very flexible and forgiving design. And of course, the styles, I wanted the styles to be sort of classic, chic, sophisticated, you know, beautiful, sexy, but not too sexy, you know, and I, I'm really happy with, with the balance that that we struck. Yeah. You told me a story about when you went to your, one of your first trade shows and you had a woman try on the dress and she was kind of reluctant at first. And I would love for you to share that story with everyone, because I think sometimes for some of you, she said the word sexy and I, I can just, I felt some of you through the internet into the future. I felt some of you go like, (gasps) right. And they're beautiful and chic and sexy. Like you can be all of those things, whatever age you are, whatever your breasts happen to be doing, whatever your height, whatever your size, whatever your shape, like those things are all available to you. And if any of you've been reluctant to try something that maybe felt like a little level of sophistication or chic, or dare we say sexy, that is outside of your comfort zone, I want you to hear this next story from Karen. It's like, please go try. So Karen, I'm going to let you take it from there. Like, Tell us that story about that trade show and that woman that you got to try on one of your dresses. Oh yeah, that was really, that was really a memorable moment. So I, the first 
my my kind of debut trade show was the lingerie show called Curve Expo in New York City. It's a big lingerie show, and all the brands there usually come with their um, size double zero models, you know, Victoria's Secret type looking models to wear their designs at the show. I didn't even know you were supposed to hire a model. <laughs> it was just me. <laughs> I'm here with my my core collection of minimalist pieces, and I'm wearing the dress. And um, so what I learned there and what I what I witnessed is that the buyers, the, the people who own the lingerie shops and the bra shops, they tend, a lot of them tend to be fuller busted women, uh, often also plus sized or on the cusp like me and often older, you know, like me. And uh, so they were dressed how they would dress. And then they were shopping the lingerie floors, you know, for their customers, obviously for their shop, which was a very different thing than, than how they saw themselves. So then when they would come to my booth and they saw me, they didn't know what to make of, of what I was doing there. They were really confused. And when I told them that, you know, this is a bra, especially for Fuller Boss with built-in support, they were pretty skeptical. And, and they were like, especially when I said Fuller busts, and they, you could just see, they, they didn't really believe it. And then I told them, well, I'm wearing it. And then they would look at me and they, and you could see their mind working and you could see them thinking, well, it does look like she's supported. And then I'd tell them my bra size and they'd be really skeptical and they'd just start touching my, <laughs> just start touching my bra. Every good you know? bra fitter that can't help herself. She's like, let me get in there. Let me see what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> Love that. Exactly. So, you know, when they assured themselves that that was really me, they were a little bit intrigued, you know, but then, and then we had a, I had a changing booth right there and I said, you should try it on. And that's where you could see like almost the fear in their eyes. Like, no, 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 no. You know, it's like, like so many of us who, who would think not for me, I could never go braless. I have to wear a bra, you know, but I kept encouraging them and I could see they were, they're were really intrigued. So there's one in particular, one woman I'm thinking of in particular who, you know, like most of her peers was dressed in a blouse and a cardigan, you know, that didn't really, it was just pretty shapeless. So I, got, I convinced her to try it on. She went into the changing booth and when she opened the curtain and stepped out of the booth, not only did she look amazing in terms of like her figure, because like you could see she had this beautiful figure, but her face had completely transformed. Like she had this huge dimply grin. She had a twinkle in her eye. She looked like a young woman, like the expression on her face. And I knew exactly what that expression was. That expression said, I feel pretty. I actually feel beautiful, you know? And that's a feeling that, that so many women who've been beaten down and discouraged for decades because the clothing options out there are just so bad and they kind of forget, they forget what it's like to feel beautiful. Yeah, and that then magic moment that on her face. Yeah, it was like I I still get chills thinking of it. I I literally cried. I literally teared up when I saw her because it was just such a such an incredible moment. Yeah, I, and it's like those moments. I think are the moments that like I know as a stylist I live for, as a coach I live for. For you, probably as like an entrepreneur, like somebody puts on something you made or tried something that you say, like, this is going to work and it totally does. And they believe you and they take a chance and they have that magic moment where you just see there's a transformation. It's like instant. And like that keeps us going. It's like a fuel for the next adventure or the next set of whatever the fuck's going to go wrong. Like you kind of bounce from moment to moment like this. Like exactly. It's so good. You said some two things that I want to go back to that I think are there was clearly determination, like in patience and compassion for yourself along the way. And you took that three month pause, but it almost feels a little bit like to me, just sort of hearing you talk is like the passion kicked in and you were like, no, fuck this. <laughs> so you don't really curse. So I'll say it for you. Like, no, fuck this. Hold on. Like, <laughs> and like the passion kicked in and I hear your passion when you talk about your customers and your clothes, I see it on your Instagram and we're going to share links to everything. So you can check out this amazing brand and go play in their garments. You really all should tell me a little bit about that passion. Like what's the mission that helps kind of bounce you forward from moment to moment with clients? 
Oh gosh. Well, like you said, that really was just, that was fuel for the fire. And like, I, I wrote about it once and they said, you know, it, there's a fire in my belly and it's not just the heartburn caused by my tight bra band. <laughs> 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 not that kind of fire. <laughs> but, um, I, I just, I just felt like women need this. Women deserve this and they don't have a voice. They don't have somebody who's out there fighting for them. And not only that, it's, it's like, we are, I think what it was is when I started realizing how completely defeated so many women are that they're not even looking for a solution. They're not even hoping for a solution. They don't even believe there's a problem and a solution like they've internalized everything so deeply. We, we all have, I mean, I, this was me, you know, especially once they hit perimenopause and then you start getting like the body, the weight distribution shift and your entire shape changes. And you're like, what's what even, I don't know what to do with this. And we are made to feel so bad about that. I mean, there's all the things that everybody knows, right? In our society, it's youth obsessed. It's it's skinny obsessed. Like you're supposed to look a very, very certain way. And, you know, our worst failure as women in this society is, you know, being too big, especially too big on top. There was one quote that I read in my research that really got me angry. And that was, it was about large breasts specifically. And it said, um, and I think it has since been wiped from the internet because I went back to try and found, find it and I couldn't, but it said something like, it was an article about why aren't there more fashion options for women with big boobs? And the answer from the industry insider was because large breasts never say wealth or class. And I just thought it was just like such a gut punch. Oh right? Knife to the heart. Damn. Yeah, exactly. And I was furious because I mean, for so many reasons, right. And I don't even have to explain. I think everybody on, on is who's listening understands why. And, but, you know, through this whole process, I also realized, you know, we, we take that criticism, we take that bias and we internalize it and we, we accept it. You know, I mean, all this, all this, you know, people who want to lose weight, people who want to change their bodies, get breast reductions, do plastic surgery. It's because we've internalized that bias against ourselves. So we are so beaten down that it never even occurs to us that maybe the problem is the clothes. Maybe the problem is not our bodies. And like, when I, when I realized that I was like, okay, whatever it takes. This is my life's work now. I don't care if, how long it takes. I don't care what I have to do. This is, I want this to be my legacy. I want to create better options for women, plus size women, full busted women, fuller figured women that, you know, are actually designed for their bodies as they are and not trying to squeeze them into some other shape to fit some other clothes. And then, you know, when you do that, when you design clothes that are actually made for the body you're designing for, they're beautiful. You're beautiful when you wear them, you know? And that's, that's the thing that is so magical to me is for a woman who, who has spent so long beating herself up for not being the right thing or not being beautiful enough. When she puts on these clothes, she sees her beauty. She sees she is beautiful. And like, it's just this light bulb moment. And um, that's, I, I'm living for that. Oh my God. I, mean, I just hear your passion, like, and your excitement. And I share a similar philosophy to you. Like the clothing is auditioning for you. You don't, you don't have to conform your body or change your body to squish yourself into the clothing. That's not how this was designed to work at all. And if you could get to the point of realization of like all the clothing's auditioning for me, and then you still decide you want to do something to your body. Totally up to you. You do you, boo-boo, always. But at least have that knowledge of, hey, what if I don't have to change a damn thing? Yeah. And have there are options option. out there thanks to Karen's brand and brand. <laughs> Thank God. We wanted Thank us God. to have that option because that's another thing where we have always felt excluded from so many trends, you know. And every time the whole bra-free thing comes around in fashion, we're always 
excluded implicitly and explicitly, and we exclude ourselves from it because somehow we've just decided that bra free means unsupported, that bra free means bare chested. But, you know, there are other ways to support our bodies and to shape them and flatter them that don't involve wearing a bra. But again, there's just been so little imagination around that issue. I mean, and here we are in the society of like artificial intelligence. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> has actually thought, hmm, maybe there's another way that doesn't involve torture to, you know, physically support these parts of our body. You know, it's crazy. I love it. I love it. Like you're going to bring that part of the fashion industry into like, the technological age, like you're going to be a part of that, which is very cool to think about because on the one hand, we talked about this and sort of our pre-call where we were getting to know each other. Like you're very much a fashion company or stylish company. You are a bra alternative company, but you're also a tech, you're a tech company. Right. Like what went into the creation of this was a lot of Technology and engineering, which some of y'all, for my big busted ladies, when we say engineering, you're all probably nodding your head and totally understand. When Karen said the word harness, all of us collectively were like, yep, that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that right there. Yep, we get it, right? So, like, it's so cool that you created this beautiful brain baby born of, like, you just kept at it, you just kept at it, you just kept at it, and you're clearly super passionate about this topic. So, what does the next sort of stage look like for you? Yeah, well... I mean, the future is wide open, I think, because I've, I've had to make, I had to recommit so many times to doing this that I am all in now. <laughs> there is no turning back. This company is going to stay. And, you know, it's very interesting. There have been other companies out there who have tried to do things specifically for fuller bus figures. A lot of them have failed. A lot of times it's a single entrepreneur woman trying to make it, you know, trying to make a change. That's not going to happen this time. I'm connecting with other full bus brands and we're trying to do some collective things together to try and, you know, build a community around this. And we want to lift each other up. Um, you know, that old saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We want to go together. We want to, we want to turn this into a movement so that, and kind of so that everyone can wake up <laughs> and realize that there are better options. And we've all just bought into this mainstream fast fashion, take whatever they give us model for too long. That's one of the things that I'll be doing. Um, Embrago is going to continue adding styles, you know, every season as we can to, to complete this core collection, which I have to say, I thought of your daily defrum this today when I got dressed. And I have to say like, I I love that term. And I think we all need that so much, just a streamlined way to, to be able to look good without having to think too much about it. And that's what my embargo dresses are. They're kind of like a one step daily be from yes. because you literally just pull it on and that's everything you're covered. You've got your, you don't have to worry about a bra. You don't have to worry about a top and a bottom. It's one piece. You put it on your dress and um, I'm wearing my, our new, um, this is one of the things that's new for the company. This is long oh, sleeve, so long sleeve cheese dress, which is coming out this fall. So there will be a couple new designs this fall and um, hopefully more as time goes forward. And um, so, you know, by all means, sign up for the email list so that you can stay abreast. No pun intended. Love it. I love a good pun. I love a good pun. <laughs> And we're going to leave links in the show notes so you can go hang out with Karen, but where's like the easiest entry into your world to see the dresses out in the wild, because there's some cool, I have an idea where they should go, but you tell us where they should go <laughs> hang out with you. Absolutely. Go to the website. It's embrago.com. The name of the company is to, is a mashup of two words, embrace, and then imago, which is the word for a fully mature butterfly. Which, you know, I that those kinds of encapsulate what this company is about because the pieces really embrace your curves, they embrace your body, and they also give you that lightness of feeling of, of a butterfly, you know, as a full grown woman, <laughs> fully it. matured. So, embrago, E M B R A, like bra, G O dot com is the website. And on all the socials at embrago clothing, you can go to Instagram. 
You can go to Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. Yeah, no. uh, be everywhere. The website's a good place to start. Be everywhere. So good. And we want to continue to hear about your journey. So we'll be following you along. Like, obviously, I want to support you in any way I can, especially as you have your like curvy, busty collective movement. Like I want in on that, like count me (laughs) in. So we'll leave links in the show notes to everything. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your entrepreneurial journey, sharing your passion with us. Cause like, I feel so fired up. Having chatted with you, I feel like everyone listening is like, "Yes, girl, yes, let's go get it." So, is there any words of wisdom or anything I didn't ask you that you want to leave us with? Oh gosh, what a great question! I think it is just that you know to encourage everybody to to insist on better and to realize that buying high quality clothing that fits your body is a form of self care, perhaps one of the most important forms because there's nothing that's tied more to our own personal dignity than, than what we wear, what we put on our body and how that makes us feel. So I think, you know, encouraging everybody to insist on that, to seek that out and to, and to believe and know that there are women who are fighting really hard to make that happen. You've you've got allies, you've got advocates at the forefront, y'all. Like you are well supported, as I like to say all the time, too, or people. And yes, pun intended there, too. So good. <laughs> Thank you so much for I, I just love your work. I love your approach. I love how you talk about and touch on so many important issues, especially related to the mental and emotional side of this. And um, so I feel like you're a kindred spirit and uh, just right. thank you for your work and thanks for having me today. You know, my friend, internet friends are the best. <laughs> All right, well, that's what we have for you today. We are out. Thank you for listening to today's episode. To learn more about how to work with me, go to judithgatan.com. Click on the start here button to get access to my free personal style class. I give you a quick style win, a confidence boost, And you walk away with the tools to start getting stylish. Who doesn't love that? See you there. Miss J out.